surrounded by wrestling fans. Not, not sports entertainment fans. Professional wrestling fans. Professional wrestling. This is it. This is us standing up. This is the Wrestling Man's Podcast. A podcast that stands up for professional wrestling. Why? Because wrestling matters. So join the revolution. Because the revolution is now. Well, enough is enough. And it's time for a change. Professional wrestling. This is it. This is us standing up. Yes, 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 yes! That's 1314! And make it to death! Dina, I am the best in the world. Cause that's the bottom line! Cause Stone Cold steps up! Yo, what's going on ladies and gentlemen? My name is Anthony Walker and yes... It is time. It is time. You know what time it is. It's time for the Wrestling Matters Podcast. That's right. Another installment, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you are well. Hope you are well in what it is you're doing. Hope you're having a good time and enjoying what we call over here in the UK, if you're in the UK, or if you're in America, or wherever it is you are listening to this podcast. Hope you're enjoying the beautiful weather. And I say beautiful because... Well, that's been okay these past couple of weeks. Anyway, in the UK, there has been a few odds and off on rain, but it has been... It's lived up to the summer, so to speak. Now, we're going to talk Raw, SmackDown, TNA, pardon the uh, problems with the throat, Impact Wrestling, a very interesting TNA this week, and Ring of Honor as well, as we always do on this show. Now, I want to start off, though, with a bit of an apology this week. I realised... It took me a week to realise this, and... I apologise deeply that my Progress Wrestling 2 episode was a bit fucked up. And I was editing Progress Wrestling 3, which is out this Wednesday. Well, which was out last Wednesday. Number 4 is out this week. Check that out. And uh, I realised I put a different... I put uh, Chapter two, chapter 1's part. What well, a Chapter 1's part in by mistake. But don't worry, guys. You have re- I've reconnected it. I've redone it. It is up there. I apologise in advance, and I deeply apologise. It's my fault. I messed up. My bad. Uh, but you can now check it out on www.soundcloud.com forward slash wrestling underscore matters underscore podcast. So be sure to go and check that out, and you can also download it for free because I allow that. And uh, yeah. Just be sure to check it out. Be sure to check out all the other episodes of the podcast as well, as well as my EPW episodes and my ICW episodes as w- and all of that good stuff as well. Uh, but like I say, I apologise in advance. I'll be more careful next time, but I never really uh, noticed that, to be honest. And I should have been more aware on that, but uh, hey, it is what it is. But... It has been put right, and like I say, you can go on to the SoundCloud account and YouTube page as well, www.youtube.com forward slash AJW Wrestling Matters, and check all of that out. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've got something to bring up. I've got something to uh, bring up. I found out this week, at least I did some research this week, and uh, apparently The Undertaker's been in training, because apparently he's coming back, or or he's come back at uh, Battleground. Apparently they said he was coming back at Battleground. Whether he has or not, you've only seen that. But they said there's going to be a match. He's going to build up a match to SummerSlam. Now, it's a case of believe it when you see it. I would have seen it as this has gone out. Uh, I record this during the week, guys, and then I put it out on a Monday. So, you either would all would have seen it and, and so forth. So, We'll have to see what happens on that one. But There's also a possibility that Sting could be available for SummerSlam. So, the question is, will we get the match everybody wants to see? Will we get the match at SummerSlam? The, the you know, the old WrestleMania match that we've all wanted to see, The Undertaker vs. Sting, but will we possibly get that at SummerSlam? I don't know. These are just rumours. And these are just, you know, things that have been said. But there's been a, there was a picture on Twitter. Somebody p- posted a picture on Twitter of The Undertaker working out. So, it's a possibility. It's a case of believe it when you see it, kind of thing, no doubt. But, you know... Will it happen? And 
if there's anybody that needs a match, it's st it's Sting. To be honest with you, he needs another match because let's face it, he got really fucked over at WrestleMania by Triple H. So I mean that old match. I mean I enjoyed it to the part where the match finished. But what they were trying to do at the end of the day, it wasn't a match about Sting. It was a Monday Night War match that the Triple H versus Sting match at WrestleMania. It wasn't about Sting's first match and everything like that, as it was supposed to be built up to. It was, you know, they just royally fucked Sting over, basically, in my opinion. Um, and hopefully, if he does come to SummerSlam, and he's going to be competing at SummerSlam, hopefully they can do something good with him, and you never know, take him, might put him over, should this match go ahead, like I say. It's only rumours as well. I also read this week on the dirt sheet. Somebody wrote out on the dirt sheet this week about, you know, the possibilities of what's taking place at Battleground. Now, Battleground is going to be Brock Lesnar one-on-one -on -one with Seth Rollins. And considering what happened on Raw this week, it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. More on that later. Now, there's all this hype that Brock's going to win. And quite frankly... I would like to see Brock be the world champion again. Because quite frankly, as much as I love Seth Rollins, I'm done with him as a champion. It's time to move on. It's time to put the belt back on Brock. And there's a leaked SummerSlam poster out that it's been all over that's been on the internet that it's gonna be WrestleMania part two at SummerSlam. So but this time without Seth Rollins. So it's gonna be Brock and Reigns that's what they reckon it's going to be. Brock and Roman Reigns again apart at WrestleMania. And he deserves a rematch with Roman Reigns because he impressed the hell out of me at WrestleMania. Hence the birth of Suplex City. Now, that's all led it into this match that Triple that Seth Rollins is supposed to have with Triple H at SummerSlam. But there's, I read it in a dirt sheet that people are holding, you know, that WWE would make, you know, would be obliged, you know, and would make sense to hold this match out, this Seth Rollins versus Triple H match out for WrestleMania, which makes no fucking sense at all because there's a lot more matches that you can build after SummerSlam or maybe a couple of months down the road to build into WrestleMania. Why the fuck would you want to draw this out? There's an opportunity. Apparently, it's already been penciled in that this is going to be taking place at SummerSlam. They're building into this match at SummerSlam. But why the fuck would you want to waste time and walk and bore this out? And you know, because it's going to get boring. You're going to drag the storyline out, and you know, there's an opportunity. I mean, I mean. I think people underestimate SummerSlam, they really do. Because yes, WrestleMania is the biggest show of the year, it's the biggest show on the WWE calendar, dare I say the biggest show on professional wrestling's calendar, but SummerSlam's up there too. It's the biggest party of the summer, you know, and it's not just WrestleMania that's a place for big matches, dream matches. SummerSlam can be that place too, you know. I mean, SummerSlam, back in the days, they had a dream match, they had Hogan and Michaels one-on-one. -on -one. If you just said that was going to happen 10 years ago, they would have said, you're an idiot. But it did, it happened in all fives and what a birthday weekend that was for me by the way you know and it, it's it's it, it just makes no sense to hold this out i mean if you're going to do this let's do it get it over with i mean the seeds are there the authority is pretty much done and dusted and it'll probably be pretty much done and dusted as of battleground you know we'll find out what happens on raw and all that and all of that but the the authority is pretty much done and dusted, but so if you're going to do this match, don't fucking drag it out. Let's get it done. Let's get it done at SummerSlam and get it over with. Um, I think it's time for Seth Rollins to maybe have a babyface run. Question is, will he get over as a babyface considering what he's done as a heel? Time will tell. And there's still things going around with Roman Reigns and, and Dean Ambrose and that. Maybe there's a possibility of a babyface, you know, reunion of the Shield. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what happens in the coming months. It's a possibility. But, uh, yeah, if they're going to do this match, Seth Rollins versus Triple H at SummerSlam, let's get it done at SummerSlam. You know, don't hold this shit out and bore us to death for the rest of the year and then do it at WrestleMania. There's a lot more matches that could be taking place at WrestleMania. You know, you could build into a lot more matches. You know, just use your brains and don't drag this out. It makes no sense to hold this match out for WrestleMania. Let's do it at SummerSlam. Let's pencil this in. If you're going to do it, let's get it done at SummerSlam. Because at the end of the day, SummerSlam is the same caliber, in my opinion, as WrestleMania when it comes to matches. Okay, yes, WrestleMania is probably the biggest show, probably a bigger show than SummerSlam. But SummerSlam is the biggest party of the summer. And it could be on that level par for a match. For matches as well, for dream matches. I.e. Hogan and Shawn. It's in a way it was kind of a clusterfuck but it was still a good match to me as a fan a few other matches that went down at SummerSlam as well dream matches alright mostly end up, mostly dream matches will end up at Wrestlemania but there's a few that went down at SummerSlam so you know let's pencil this in let's get it done let's go to SummerSlam and get this over with as well 
I mean, why do, why would you drag that? I mean, there's already been talk of Kevin Owens going one-on-one with The Undertaker at WrestleMania 32. So, again, that's another possibility for The Undertaker, should he come to WrestleMania next year, you know? I mean, what would be in line for Seth Rollins at WrestleMania? You know, there's a lot of possibilities that can that you can build in to have Seth Rollins face someone at WrestleMania, you know? Maybe you could have Triple H have him fight Triple H at WrestleMania. You did it with Brock, you know. You had him fight him at, you know, there was first match was at, was at, uh, yeah, the first match was at SummerSlam. You had it again at WrestleMania, Triple H won, and you had it again in Extreme Rules. If you're going to have Triple H versus Seth Rollins at WrestleMania, why not do that? There you go. You know, that's an idea for you. Do it that way, you know. Seth Rollins probably beats him, or Triple H goes over at SummerSlam, and then Seth Rollins gets his rematch at WrestleMania or something, or... Seth Rollins beats him at SummerSlam. Triple H gets his rematch at WrestleMania. Yada yada yada. You know, so many different ways you can do. I mean, you don't have to hold things out to get them done on the biggest on a bigger stage. You could have them out on the stage, on a big stage, and then build towards a big stage. It's, you know, it's called common sense. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, tune in to that, and I'll hope you enjoyed the weekend and everything. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, Battleground if you saw it and I'm gonna end it there and I'll be back right after this quick timeout with Raw and Smackdown main talking points so stay tuned Be sure to tune in every single Tuesday now for the Wrestling Matters Podcast Extra where I'll be hosting a podcast on one promotion and one promotion only. I C W Insane Championship Wrestling, the hottest promotion in Scotland. Well I'll be reviewing their shows. Oh my god! god. Talking ICW. That's 1314! And who knows, maybe get some guests on. So be sure to tune in to the Wrestling Matters Podcast Extra ICW Podcast. Insane Championship Wrestling every Tuesday on YouTube, Podomatic, Stitcher Radio, downloaded free at iTunes, Mixcloud, and Soundcloud. Wrestling Matters, wrestling fans. World, look into my eyes. When you see me on a show, when you see these fans, you know you've got the best in the damn world. We are ICW and you're gonna know our name. Here we, here we, here we fucking go! Be sure to listen to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. What? What? Every Sunday with Kenny Killer and the Gowden Sugar Shoes. Yes! Yes! With all the news, views, and laughter that you want. They like jet airplanes. They like long limousines. Every Sunday, the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast on Podomatic, iTunes, and YouTube. So why don't you choke on that, slap nut? Welcome back to part two of the Wrestling Matters Podcast. And without further ado, guys, we'll get into the Raw and SmackDown main talking points. Now, even after Brock Lesnar turned J&J Security and their prize Cadillac into mincemeat last week, give Seth Rollins credit where it's due. The architect didn't blink at the prospect of staring down the beast incarnate in Raw's opening moments, even if he only had a well-rested cane to speak on of as his backup, so to speak. Despite his defences, the architect certainly talked a big game, as did Kane when Lesnar and Heyman attempted to bait the director of operations into fighting the Conqueror by bringing up Lesnar's most infamous deed. Even the professional Kane brushed the taunt aside, at least until Champion and Challenger reunited with their respective retains and respective thoughts for the contract signing later on if they need. More on that later. Intercontinental Champion Ryback and Randy Orton defeated Big Show and Sheamus. And yes, Miz was ever presence lurking at ringside, but as you well know, guys, unfortunately, the Intercontinental Championship match was not going to take place at uh, the, the Battleground pay-per-view because Ryback, after this, woke up Tuesday morning and had a staph infection. Whenever I heard that story before, or something like that before, oh yes. 
Now he knows how CM Punk feels. Roman Reigns gets a little bit of his a little bit of retribution on Mr. Wyatt. It's been a long time since anybody got the jump on Bray Wyatt, so give it up for Roman Reigns for pulling off the impossible and dishing out some long-awaited payback on the self-proclaimed new face of fear whose my games have tormented Reigns for a month. Bray was lured into the open under the pretense of battling an old four and Roman Reigns' brother in, in the shield, Dean Ambrose. Though the lunatic fringe was merely playing the, perver the proverbial carrot, while Reigns supplied the stick as soon as Wyatt stepped out through the fog. While Ambrose admired his brother-in-arms hand handiwork, the big dog went to town on the Eater of Worlds, and at least until Wyatt used an equalizer to get away. Now for my favorite part of the evening. That's right. Apparently, there's now a long-awaited revolution in the NXT in the Divas Division, Total Divas Division, as I call it. Team Bella's stranglehold on the Divas Division just got a lot more, te a lot more. How can I put this? Serious. Where what was intentionally just. The latest victory parade for convincing trio of Nikki Bella, Sister Brie, and the odd one out Alicia Fox was quickly spoiled by an appearance by Stephanie McMahon. The Queen Bee of the WWE wasn't very much impressed with the Divas Champions postering, if you will, and decided to or posturing and decided to introduce some changes in the Divas division. Some much needed changes. She brings out Paige and some backup for Paige from NXT in the form of Becky Lynch and one Charlotte Flair. When Naomi and Tamina came out, took issue with their exclusion, Steph had something for them in the form of the NXT Women's Champion, Sasha Banks. And I'll leave it with this. I'll leave you guys with this. Divas are dead. The women are here. Primetime players and Mark Henry defeat the New Day. Just another, th just another uh, wrench in the coffin for the New Day going into the tag match at Battleground. Our truth and King Barrett, I'm, I'm done with that. Like I said, I'm very much done with that. A very, very impressive triple threat match to see who would face Cena for the championship. The John Cena U.S. Open Challenge is here, and a lot of people think they should be next in line. What was intentionally shaping up to be another effort by Rusev to reclaim the Stars and Stripes title was cut short by a line jumping Kevin Owens and then again by Cesaro looking for the rubber match against Cena, the C Nation, last week's epic war of attrition. The solution was a triple threat brawl between Rusev, Cesaro and Kevin Owens to see who would face Cena for the US title. And it resembled less than a wrestling contest than a three way car ca crash. So much so in fact that Owens up and left to wait for Battleground that Rusev won was more less because sh someone had to. After a dominant run by Cesaro, the Bulgarian brute knocked the King of Swing off the top turnbuckle and Thrust kicked him into sealing a victory. Barely though. Which led to the US title match and which Rusev won by DQ only though. Why? Because Owens allowed, because Rusev got uh, uh, Cena in the camel clutch and uh, <laughs> Bruce, uh, Kevin Owens came down and spoiled the part. He said that if there was anybody going to be taking that US title from Cena, it would be Kevin Owens. Stardust beats Neville in his return after uh, the passing of his father, the legend that is Dusty Rose, and the World Heavyweight Championship contract signing. One axe handle, one overturned table, and one broken ankle later, and Seth Rollins is officially set to defend his WWE World Heavyweight Championship against Brock Lesnar at Battleground. Despite the intense or the instance of Kane that a plan was in play to weaken the beast before Battleground, the contract signing quickly turned into a one man demolition spree once the pen had been put to paper. Not only did Lesnar flip the table over to find a axe handle after Heyman's slandering of his brother, increasingly hostile Rollins all night, also suffered a broken ankle. Kane, that is. The injury came after Kane's master plan, an axe handle stored under the contract table, failed to pan out, and his gritty efforts to fend Lesnar off would eventually throw up by the Beast Incarnate setting the steel steps 
and smashing the steel steps onto his right ankle. Further injuring followed when a frustrated Rollins insulted Kane and stomped on the ruined ankle, pausing only to promise once again that he will slay the beast at Battleground, partly because of adrenaline, sure. But at this point, it's fair to say that Rollins has nothing left to lose, except his life at, at uh, Battleground. And with that being said, that is the end of the uh, Raw main token point. And without further ado, we'll get right into it. Let's get into the SmackDown points. SmackDown kicked off this week with Roman Reigns. Three days after launching a surprise counter offense against Bray Wyatt mind games on Raw, Roman Reigns kicked off SmackDown poised for his highly anticipated battleground clash with Wyatt. The powerful superstar made it clear. The Eater of Worlds is not in his head. Not to be overshadowed, Wyatt appeared on the Titan Tron and ignited a war of words between the two competitors. But the big dog was noticeably shaking when his adversary advised him to spend time with those he holds most dear. Wyatt said that after Battleground, Reigns will not be able to promise that he will ever be home again. Uh, the New Day, Big E and Kofi beat the Lucha Dragons, warm up into their uh, t tag team title match. King Barrett gets one over on Jack Swagger, however, he is interrupted by our truth again. After overcoming Jack Swagger with a ball hammer elbow, King Baron unleashed a verbal assault on the emerging our truth, promising to finally storm King What's Up, constant BS in their battle for the crown at the kickoff show. And I hope he does. Cesaro and Rusev fought in what was a great match. After a after engaging in a chaotic triple threat match on Raw, a contest that earned Rusev an immediate US title match against John Cena, the Bulgarian Brute and Cesaro squared off on SmackDown. And after catching his opponent with a flying uppercut as he was leaping off the top rope, Cesaro hit the neutralizer for the three count. In doing so, he became the first ever superstar to SmackDown and the second overall to pin Rusev, who was the first John Cena at WrestleMania. Neville beat Stardust, but then Stardust attacked Neville backstage. This feud is not over between these two. The explosive trio of Naomi, Tamina, and the NXT champion Sasha Banks explained why they are the perfect combination to dominate the squared circle. And as for that, the main event, which was Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose versus Sheamus and the Big Show. Moments after Dean Ambrose turned Big Show's attempt of a choke slam into a DDT through the announce table in SmackDown's main event, Roman Reigns' attempt to spear Sheamus was stopped in his tracks by a sudden sneak attack by Bray Wyatt. Through the emerge of the self-proclaimed new face of fear brought an end to the match by disqualification. It wouldn't deny the big dog from hitting his battleground opponent with a superman punch and laying out the Celtic warrior with an earth shattering spear. And that is the end of the Smackdown and Raw main talking point. Stay tuned because after this I'll be back with NXT's main talking point so stay tuned. For new episodes of the Wrestling Matters podcast as well as other great professional wrestling related content be sure to check out the Wrestling Matters channel on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash AJW Wrestling Matters. You'll get weekly episodes of the podcast and you'll get other great wrestling content as well. Be sure to check it out. Subscribe, like and do all that good stuff. The Wrestling Matters channel where wrestling matters on YouTube. If you're a fan of the Wrestling Matters podcast, be sure to check out the, Fest the Wrestling Matters podcast Twitter page at WM Podcast for news, reviews, and upcoming episodes, and you will be let known on various other topics as well in the world of professional wrestling. So if you like the Wrestling Matters podcast, be sure to follow the Wrestling Matters podcast on Twitter at WM Podcast. Wrestling Matters, wrestling fans. <laughs> They say this is wrestling, but ladies and gentlemen, this is Progress Wrestling. And on July the 1st, Progress Wrestling comes to the Wrestling Matters Podcast. That's right, Wednesday, July the 1st, I will present a podcast on Progress Wrestling. Starting with Chapter 1, and from every week onwards, I will bring you every single show from that. ProgressWrestling.com, Progress Wrestling on demand service. Progress Wrestling comes to the Wrestling Matters Podcast, July the 1st, only on SoundCloud. Stitcher Radio, YouTube, and OSW TV. 
Wrestling Mads, Wrestling Fans. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to part three of the Wrestling Madness podcast. And without further ado, we'll get right into it. This is the NXT main talking points. Now, Jason Jordan and Chad Gilbert, I'll say that again, Jason Jordan and Chad Gabel defeat Elias Sampson and Steve Cutler. Wow, that's not easy to say. After weeks of trying to convince Jason Jordan to team up, Chad finally got his wish this week. The former Olympian made... The most of the opportunity showcasing his unique set of pinning combinations and takedowns against Alias Samson and Steve Coulter, or Cutler. The new team picked up their first win in an impressive fashion when Jordan, with Jordan lifting Cutler up and tossing him over to Gale who hit a bridging suplex for the three count. Tickets are still available for the NXT show in August. Samoa Joe faces Axel Tisha. I hope I said that right. If I didn't, I apologize. New NXT recruit Axel showed no fear when stepping into the ring with a badass Samoa Joe. Training strikes with the big man, however, Axel's offense only made Joe angry. The Samoan submission machine connected with a muscle buster and followed up with a rear naked choke to win by submission. Enough said. Eva Marie announced that she'll be competing in NXT. After going through a scheduled tryout overseen by the NXT general manager, uh, William Regal, and Performance Center head coach, Sarah, oh, that was Performance Center assistant head coach, excuse me, Sarah Am Atto, if that's pronounced wrong again, I apologize, Eva Marie revealed that she'll be returning to action in NXT starting next week. NXT Tag Team Champions Blake and Murphy defend against or defeated rather, Fulton and Dawkins in a non-title match. With new NXT number one contenders, the Void Villains sure to be scouting team th- them. NXT Tag Team Champions Blake and Murphy send out a little old school me- a little message to the old school challengers. The champions dominated Dawkins and Fulton on their way to victory after the bout. Alexia Bliss ordered the champions to attack Fulton. They launch through the air, sending her crashing into Fulton with a sparkle splash. Sami Sami Zayn's update the NXT Universe on his status. Receiving a warm welcome from the NXT Universe, Sami Zayn returned to Full Sail University for the first time since the battle with Kevin Owens and TakeOver. Unstoppable and the shoulder surgery that followed. The NXT Champion revealed that he would be likely to be out of action until 2016. Despite the setback, Zayn remains optimistic and challenges the winner and says he will get his NXT title back and payback on Kevin Owens. Now for the Women's Championship match. The NXT Universe were split as these two BFFs turned rivals locked up in their latest championship showdown. Charlotte used her strength and agility to gain the upper hand in the opening moments of the match, muscling the boss around the square circle. Banks took control after a well-placed knee working over Charlotte in the corner before wearing her down with a straight jacket submission. The genetically superior diva used her strength to power out of the boss's clutches before turning Sasha inside out with a thunderous spear. The bout got extremely heated as the boss slapped Charlotte in the face screaming I'm better than you. The enraged that enraged the challenger who unleashed a fury of strikes on Sasha before cl- kinch- clinching in her figure 4 leg lock which he calls the figure 4 8 lock and using the ring apron for extra leverage. The two competitors tossed back in the ring with Banks emerging from the struggle with the bank statement locked in deep leaving Charlotte no choice but to tap out. After the bout the two competitors embraced in a sign of respect before Charlotte left the ring to the boss, letting the NXT Women's Champion celebrate a hard fought victory. Hope you enjoyed that ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm gonna take a quick time out and after this I'll be back with Teenage May Talking Points so stay tuned. Be sure to tune in every single Tuesday now for the Wrestling Matters Podcast Extra where I'll be hosting a podcast on one promotion and one promotion only. I-C-W.
AEW, Insane Championship Wrestling, the hottest promotion in Scotland, where I'll be reviewing their shows. Oh, oh my god! god! Talking ICW. That's 1314! And who knows, maybe getting some guests on. So be sure to tune in to the Wrestling Matters Podcast Extra ICW Podcast, Insane Championship Wrestling, every Tuesday on YouTube. Podomatic, Stitcher Radio, download it free at iTunes, Mixcloud, and Soundcloud. Wrestling matters, wrestling fans. World, look into my eyes. When you see me on a show, when you see these fans, you know you've got the best in the damn world. We are ICW and you're going to know our name. Here we, here we, here we fucking go. If you're a fan of the Wrestling Matters podcast, be sure to check out the, Fe- the Wrestling Matters podcast Twitter page at WM Podcast for news, reviews, and upcoming episodes, and you will be let known on various other topics as well in the world of professional wrestling. So if you like the Wrestling Matters Podcast, be sure to follow the Wrestling Matters Podcast on Twitter at WM Podcast. Wrestling Matters, wrestling fans. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to part four of the Wrestling Matters Podcast, and now it's time for TNA. That's right, TNA main talking points. Dixie Carter comes out this week to introduce the law in TNA. The Impact Wrestling roster surrounds the ring as Dixie Carter recalls the last time she was surrounded. She says she'd just gone through a table and the roster was cheering for that. She wonders how things got to that point. Dixie Carter takes pla- takes blame pointing out her ego and as the cause of her actions. She says going through a table gave her an incredible perspective and respect for the wrestlers. Dixie surges into talking about the future. Seg- well, segues into talking about the future, which she says is easy to doubt. She says it's easy to have n- to not have faith in her promises, but she needs everyone's trust. Dixie s- says she hired someone that understands the roster, someone to stand to, uh, to stands as the law. Ethan Carter the third in the rubs, demanding to know the mystery person identity. Dixie Carter introduces Bully Ray as the law. The new charge of the TNA roster. Bully Ray recounts his phone conversation with Dixie Carter. He says Dixie apologized for her actions, for not for letting down the roster and fans. Bully says he would only return to TNA wrestling for the fans and the roster. He instructs every he instructs everyone at ringside to stand on the apron because they are equal and don't deserve to be standing on the floor symbolically beneath himself and Dixie Carter. Bully Ray accepts the position to lead TNA back to the promised land. Be interested to see how that pans out. A battle royal to determine the number one contender for the wo- for the World Heavyweight Championship and we'll get a title shot later on in the evening. So, what came down to Drew Galloway, MVP and Eric Young are the final three participants. Young and MVP form an alliance against the leader or the former leader of the Rising. The alliance endures through an elimination attempt. MVP tries dumping Galloway over the top rope, but Eric Young rushes up from behind and with an elimination of his own. Galloway fends off Young, eliminating him in the process. Drew Galloway wins. He goes one-on-one with Ethan Carter III later on in the evening. A four-way match for the X Division Championship, which saw Tigre Uno, DJ Z, Rockstar Spud, and one Grado, which ended as DJZ and Tigre Uno strip away Grado's advantage before squaring off with one another. Grado fends off his attackers and then he and Spud form an alliance against DJZ. Tigre Uno delivers a double drop kick from the top. Grado lands in the center of the ring and Spud send to the outside. Tigre Uno flies over the top rope with a crossbody to take out Spud. Then the X Division champion delivers the 450 on Grado for the win and retains the X Division Championship. They have a new Knockouts Champion which saw with timing laid out Brooke appears posed for a moonsault Jade shoves her off the ropes when suddenly the arena goes dark and when the lights come up Gail Kim is standing over her fallen over a fallen Martine Bell. Gail sends Jade face first into the turnbuckle. The lights go down again. Gail disappears and turn and Tyrene turns into a butter face maker, face breaker. Brooke makes the cover of the official count three and Tyrene's historic two hundred and thirty day reign as knockouts champion is over. 
and we have a new women's knockouts champion. Backstage, Kurt Angle is seen with Bully Ray. As a meeting ends, Kurt Angle says he presented Bully Ray, Bully with a great idea, and he's on his way to the ring to reveal it. Angle's announcement. Angle says that TNA is undergoing a lot of changes, that he isn't ashamed of losing the title to Ethan Carter III. Angle takes issue with the shady finish of his rematch with Ethan Carter III. He says Bully Ray has granted him a rematch on his own time. Angle says he's been diagnosed with a tumor in his neck and that he'll undergo surgery to remove it. Angle continues by saying that when he returns, he'll challenge EC3 for the title. Eric Young interrupts Angle's farewell. Young says Angle needs to start telling the truth. He says EC3 didn't defeat him but that he did. Angle asks, uh, he asks Angle how many power drivers he received. Then he asks Angle how many power drivers his neck has left. Young tells Angle he'd like to take credit for the, the tumor, but that's nature. He says nature is telling him to, it's time to pack it up and go home. Eric Young tells Angle he wants him gone longer than he takes a cheap shot. Angle attempts to fight back, but Young sets up Angle for power driver Chris Melendez makes the save but pays Melendez receives a power driver and is laid out next to Angle as Eric Young stands tall and moves up the ramp. Also, James Stone one on one with Magnus in the replay, and James Stone ends up winning that match. On to the main event of the evening, which was the World Championship match. And I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, you know what happened, but I will say this. It ended with this. Galloway sets up a big boot, EC3 counters, EC3 drops the champ for a near fall, but Tyrus places EC3's boot on the ropes, Tyrus trips Galloway, but the interference proves effective as the Scott unloads with a series of traps on EC3, ineffective that is, I'm sorry, it was ineffective, EC3 in the corner, Galloway inadvertently takes out the referee and EC3 drops him with a low blow. Tyrus climbs into the ring, but Eli Drake is there to counteract him cl crutch in hand. Tyrus backs down, but Galloway crosses in front of Drake. Drake turns on Galloway. Drake climbs out of the ring and retreats up the ramp. EC3 scores the win with the one presenter and retains the title. Question is, what is going through Eli Drake's mind? I guess we'll find out this week. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'll take a quick commercial and back after this with Ring of Honor. Stay tuned. Be sure to listen to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. What? What? Every Sunday with Kenny Killer and the Gowdam Sugar Shoes. Yes! Yes! With all the news, views, and laughter that you want. They like jet airplanes. They like long limousines. Every Sunday, the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast on Podomatic, iTunes, and YouTube. So why don't you choke on that, slap nut? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Wrestling Matters Podcast, and it's now time for the Ring of Honor review. That's right, ROH. ROH kicked off this week with Adam Page versus Matt Sardell. Now, train wrestler to start, advantage Sardell, great arm drags and a hurricane rider from, Sard from Sardell. Sardell goes to baseball slide Page, but hits Steve Carino's son. Page hits a shooting star shoulder tackle, then BJ attacks Sidell as Ring of Honor goes to a break. Back from the break, Sidell unloads on uh, Page, sorry, Brave Father, and rolls up, gets a near fall. Page in control. Pompando fall away slam, gets a near fall for Page. Kicks and chops by Sidell. Matt f fights. Back is on. Knee slam gets a near fall for Matt. Matt hits a reverse. Matt Sardell hits a reverse leg drop. Then Moonsault gets a near fall. Matt hits a kick. Rocks Page. Goes up top. Stops that. 
Well, Page goes up top, stops that. Well, Matt hits a kick, rocks Page, goes up top, Page stops it, hits a backbreaker, gets a near fall. Page gets out of the way from a shooting star press, then hits an inside outside clothesline from the apron, gets a near fall. Matt jumping knee, hits shooting star press on Page, gets the win. BJ attacks Matt from behind, tells Colby to get the chair. ACH comes in, unloads on Page, BJ hits him with a chair, Colby brings in chairs, decade mugging ACH, making him watch as Page hits his finisher right to passage on Matt on the chairs. Have the decade gone too far? Veda Scott comes out and sends a message to Moose on behalf of Cedric Alexander and says Cedric will take everything he did not deserve. Moose that is. Salas Young versus Will Farah. Young wrestling Will using knees hits a front suplex will fights back young cuts him off will gets a roll up and gets a near fall then works on young's arm will getting near falls on amber young gets out with power young slowing down will on the mat will gets out fights back Tornado DDT gets Will a near fall. Will gets a near fall for Sunset Flip. DDT by Young deep in the corner and Will on Will. Castle's men, Dalton Castle's men come out to distract Young. Ferrari gets the win by a roll up. Young attacks Castle and hits a rope DDT which is uh, which is what Randy Orton does the when he hangs them on the second rope and then DDTs them off that and then hits the TKO on one of them. Sending a message I'm sure to Dalton Castle. Now, the main event was for the TV Championship that involved Mark Briscoe versus, or getting his turn out of title, against Jay Lethal. Lethal starts off fast. Jay holds Mark for Truth to hit him with the Book of Truth, not knowing ODB was behind Jay. Jay is going to hit ODB, misses, Mark rocks Jay and throws him in the guardrail. ODB chases Truth at, rings, at ringside. Mark hits Mark on top hits a chop, gets a near fall, Mark in control as Ring of Honor goes to break. Back from the break, Mark is in control and loading on Jay in the corner. Suplex gets, Ma- Suplex gets Mark a near fall, Jay unload on lethal, unloads on Mark in the corner, advantage lethal. Mark hits a suplex, the clothesline and single leg drop kick and then Jay Diesel comes out. Mark gets rid of him and then takes an Inseguri. Jay hits backbreaker, gets a near fall, wearing out Mark on the mat, mat wrestling him if you will. Advantage Jay gets a near fall, clothesline on Lords gets a near, another near fall, back to wearing out Mark. Mark hits T-bone, suplex, Jay hits him with a boot, Mark hits a hard clothesline on the champion, the TV champion, then hits a fisherman buster and gets a near fall. Jay hits a super kick on Mark, goes for lethal injection, gets suplex, then clothesline to the outside. Mark hits a drop kick, then hits the apron elbow on the floor as Ring of Honor goes to break. Back from the break, Truth looks to get involved, ODB puts a stop to that. Donovan Dajek comes down, but Jay Briscoe hit, cuts him off at the past from behind. Mark hits frog elbow, gets a near fall. Jay unloading on the House of Truth, Jay Briscoe that is. Lethal dives on ODB. Diesel hits low blow and Lethal hits the Lethal Injection to get the win and retain the title. Lethal puts boots to Mark then goes toe to toe with Jay Diesel. With Jay, uh, I'll, I'll say that again. Lethal puts boots to Mark, then goes toe to toe with Jay. Diesel and Dijak jump Jay Briscoe, mug him. Roderick Strong comes in, attacks House of Truth, and chases him away. Then Strong unloads on Lethal with chops, then challenges the champ to a six man match. House of Truth versus the Briscoes and Roderick Strong. However, ODB had other ideas. She wanted to make it an eight person tag match. And get the truth, and get Truth Martini involved. I think the 200th episode of Ring of Honor is going to be very big. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, five out of five for that. I rate that very much. Love Ring of Honor and uh, the 2000. The two, well, the, did I say 2000? If I said 2000, I apologize. I meant the 200th episode of Ring of Honor Television is going to be big, and uh, I'll be reviewing that next week. So until then, I'll be back after this with a something. I guess you could say a pipe bomb. 
so stay tuned. If you like the Wrestling Matters Podcast, why not check out the Wrestling Matters Podcast Facebook fan page at www.facebook.com forward slash WM Podcast. Wrestling Matters, wrestling fans. For new episodes of the Wrestling Matters Podcast, as well as other great professional wrestling related content, be sure to check out the Wrestling Matters channel on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash AJW Wrestling Matters. You'll get weekly episodes of the podcast and you'll get other great wrestling content as well. Be sure to check it out, subscribe, like, and do all that good stuff. The Wrestling Matters channel, where wrestling matters on YouTube. In anybody else's hands, this is a microphone. In my hands, it's a pipe bomb. Welcome back to the final part of the Wrestling Matters podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. And I want to end, as you heard, the pipe bomb. Now, if you've listened to previous episodes of this podcast, you... and, and probably podcasts that I've been on, whether it's Offshoot Radio, Sunday Segway, whatever, you know that big time I have been very vocal about the Divas Division. Hell, even dubbing it the Total Divas Division. Because that's what it is. It's a Divas Division based off a reality show, which is complete crap. Okay, for Pete's sake. It is really, really the biggest bunch of bullshit ever. I mean, how can somebody, how can you have a wrestling division of the best women in supposedly pro wrestling today? How can that be something, you know, how can you have that, you know, based off a reality show? Because let's face it, that's the booking block, Total Divas, for the reality show. And I've been very vocal about this on other shows. And I think on previous episodes of my podcast, I've always said, I even said once that there is women's wrestling in WWE. Just not on Raw or SmackDown. If you want women's wrestling in WWE, you go to NXT. You know, getting the gist there. Well, it seems there's a revolution starting, as you heard earlier on in the Raw main talking points, when Stephanie McMahon comes out and gets in the face of Team Bella, which is a fucking joke. Okay, yes, Team Bella, Nikki Bella, Brie Bella. I get it, but f- I, I'm not. I'm probably not the only one who thinks this. But Jesus Christ, Alicia Fox is the odd one out in that group. For Pete's sake. Like I said on like I said on Offshoot Radio, <laughs> it's like WWE did not know did not know the creative team did not know what to do with Alicia Fox. So thought, oh yeah, we'll just put it with Brie Bella and Dicky Bella and call them Team Bella. Give me a break. I mean, it sucks. And it seems that Paige has finally got some backup in this revolution to stop Nikki Bella, <coughs> the future Mrs. Cena, from uh, being champion. So Stephanie brings out Becky Lynch. She brings out Charlotte. Thank you, God. The future of the Divas, D- D- Divas division, by the way. Charlotte Flair. You heard that here first. And you probably heard it on previous occasions as well. I really do believe that Charlotte is the future of the Divas division. Or none. Taking nothing away from Becky or Sasha Banks. And then, as that was happening, you had Brie Bella, Nikki Bella, and Alicia Fox. You had Paige, Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair, and then Naomi and Tamina come out looking for their end of the pie and question Stephanie why they were excused from all of this. And what do you know? Stephanie has Sasha Banks for her, for them. And then, as you know, it all kicked off at the end, and then at one point it had uh, Sasha with their finishing move on someone, it had Charlotte with the figure eight lock on Alicia Fox, and it had Becky Lynch with her finishing move on the other one, beating up Team Bella. I think it's safe to say from what I saw in the picture this week, there was a picture that came out that was posted on Facebook that said, Divas are dead, women, the women are here. Because let's face it, I don't know why in a way Sasha Banks joined forces with Naomi and Tamina, to be honest. I think she should have just went with Paige, Becky Lynch and uh, Charlotte Flair. Because let's face it, you've got Paige, you've got Becky Lynch and you've got Charlotte Flair. Paige, the very first the, the very first women's champion on NXT. Becky Lynch, who had a hell of a match with Sasha Banks on NXT for the title, and a future champion in her own right. If not, she damn sure will be the Divas champion. And you've got Charlotte, a former NXT women's champion as well. And then you've got... And then if she went over, you'd have had Sasha Banks. You'd have had Team NXT right there. And it would have made more sense for that to happen. It made no sense to have... In having Sasha Banks uh, put with... Naomi and Tamina, in my opinion, because at the end of the day, they're divas themselves. And to me, and Naomi thinks she's all that in a bag of chips. And Tamina, 
I have no idea what direction they're going with her in WWE, but anyway. I mean, you've got them two. I mean, you'd be best off putting them two together. Having them two is together and having the four there because that would have been Team NXT. Because let's face it, it's been well documented and it's been well said. The NXT women's wrestlers, notice I said women's wrestlers, right? The WWE Divas, and I'm not necessarily saying all of them, there's a few on there as well, like Paige and that. But the WWE Divas can hold a candle to them on NXT. I mean, example for you, this past week, Charlotte and Sasha Banks, great match. They had a great match before. Go to uh, NXT TakeOver and find that Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch match. And I guarantee you, you'll be, you'll be understanding where I'm coming from here. You know, I mean, it's it seems that Stephanie has finally tried to... It's finally, well, finally someone's took over and grabbed the WWE Divas division by the throat and said, let's shake this up. Let's make this a women's division. Let's make this a division we can be proud of. Will it work? We'll have to wait and see. You know, time will tell before it works. But, you know, there's a lot of Divas on that roster, especially the NXT girls as well that can go and it's not that it's not just the divas division there's a few ladies in the divas division who could wrestle too who would be best off on nxt <clears throat> one in particular natalia how is she not women's champion or divas champion i'll never know and hell she put Re she put charlotte flair over it was charlotte flair who beat her for the title in that tournament which when when they had Paige relinquish the women's championship good one jbl but at the end of the day the divas are dead bringing in women's wrestling and it seems Stephanie's doing that. Will this last? I hope so because if there was ever a division that needs a shake up in WWE it's the Divas division because I've said this many times again on offshoot and segue they'd be best off taking out the Divas division taking the Divas belt throwing it in the trash and bringing up the NXT belt and having both the, the wrestlers on the main roster and the wrestlers on NXT you know together in one big division because the Divas division you know it's it 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 at the moment right now it's a joke. Hopefully from what App saw this past Monday, it won't be. But at the end of the day, it needs a shake up, and it damn sure needs to be put away and it needs to be brought away from the uh, Total Divas reality show because a Divas division does not need to be booked off a reality show. It's as simple as that. If you want to have the Total Divas, yes, it's a success. It's a successful show, but keep it away from the Divas division. The reason why I say this, I mean, they had, a, they had an angle on there where the Summer Rae, Rosa Mendez, and Natalia, and Natalia grabbed Summer Rae and threw her out the car. What happened after that? It led to a match between them two on Raw. Keep that show away. Have the Divas, have the Total Divas its own entity, and keep, you know, that away. It's, it's bullshit. It's absolutely bullshit, and I don't, I don't like it. And hopefully, after what I saw, things are looking up for the Divas division, and long may it continue. There is a revolution. The Divas are dead. Women's, the women, the Divas are dead. The women are here. Women's wrestling lives. Hopefully, it will live in WWE on the main roster where it should be. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the podcast. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for tuning in to listen. My name is Anthony Walker. Tune in to the ICW podcast and the Progress Wrestling podcast as well. And until next time, guys, my name is Anthony Walker. See ya. Well, enough is enough, and it's time for a change. Professional wrestling, this is it. This is us standing up. Yes, 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 yes. That's 1314. Tell death. Dina, I am the best in the world. Cause that's the bottom line. Go, 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 go